Hi everyone from uh, Florida. Welcome to our uh, channel, Kyork Immigration Law. I wanted to make this video today about what happens when a dependent child that's accompanying or non-accompanying in a spousal sponsorship application does not undergo a medical examination. So if you are doing a spousal sponsorship, uh, let's say you're the sponsor and um, your wife or your common law partner uh, has a minor child. Uh, let's take the example that the child will not be coming to Canada. You have spoken to the mother or not, or you know that it's not a possibility. Let's say you have spoken and it's a understanding that um, you're not gonna bring that child to Canada. Um, in a lot of cases, let's say the mother has uh, custody in another country, or you may even have joint custody, but most of the time there's custody or there's no actual, there's no, uh, there's no agreements at all. Um, so you're filing your application. It is mandatory to include the information of the child in the application in terms of name, date of birth, um, identity document. The Immigration Canada has to know the existence of this child and has to have all the information provided in the forms. Now, when the child is non-accompanying, that has to be indicated. And something that a lot of people don't know or realize later on is that it is mandatory for that child to undergo a medical examination. Now, it's a little bit odd because the, the common sense would be like, well, why does this child have to do a medical examination? This child is not even coming. I've separated from, from this person. I'm not bringing this child to Canada. It's actually a little bit, when you think about it, kind of invasive, you know, like kind of forcing this child in another country to undergo a medical examination. But the law in Canada with respect to that is actually really, really strict. So if you don't do the medical examination, then what's going to happen is that immigration is going to ask you for it over and over again. And if you indicate that, well, this child is not coming, whether you indicated this in the beginning or later on, they will constantly ask you until they're satisfied that you understand the consequences of this. What's the consequences of not having a dependent child, a minor child, uh, medically examined is that you will never ever be able to sponsor that child ever again because that child will be excluded under uh, the immigration rules in Canada. So what we see a lot in our office is clients who come to us and they say we well, filed this application for spousal sponsorship we've done everything correctly we indicated in a letter that were the child is not coming and immigration keeps sending us these letters saying that the child has to get examined. Now, in most cases, immigration doesn't take a decision. They won't say that they're going to refuse. They just keep asking for it. So what we, when we take over those files, we say, well, the explanation you provided is okay, but we need to go a bit further than that. So we try to do the best, which is we might not be able to do everything, but we have a checklist. So we try to get a declaration, a statu statutory declaration, or you can call it an affidavit from the, the parent uh, that's staying with the child, saying that I do not consent to my child being medically examined, or I will never consent to my child going to Canada, therefore I don't want to do the medical examination. Or I, I had a discussion with the father of my child and I uh, refuse to have my child undergo a medical examination. Then we have the applicant, the person that's being sponsored, uh, sign the declaration saying, I understand the consequences of not having my child examined. I understand that if I don't have him or her medically examined, then I will never ever be able to sponsor uh, this child. I, I make this declaration, statement, decision with my full capacity. So we include documents like that. We prepare a legal submission letter, which is a cover letter that kind of outlines the history of the family, why the child is staying behind, what's the understanding. And sometimes we might not have, for example, a statutory declaration from um, the other parent uh, where the child who the child is staying with because they might not communicate we've had cases where clients come to us and they say I don't have any communication with that child I am the the father of the mo or the mother um, the per the mother or the father of the child is not communicating with me will refuse to answer my calls or emails even if I wanted to have my child examined I wouldn't be able to so 
the, if that circumstance happens, then if those are the facts, then we have to explain it in a different way and, and add other supporting documents such as affidavits or reference letters from friends and family or colleagues or neighbors that know of the situation. Because from it, the way I see it is that immigration is trying to protect the rights of this minor child. A child has parents and immigration can't take that lightly because there's been many cases where later on something changes. Maybe that the parents who taking care of the child gets sick. Maybe the child is 17, 18 years old and currently you're a dependent child until you're 21. So maybe that child is 17, 18 and says, well, I want to go join my mother or father in Canada and I want to get sponsored and uh, that's a great opportunity for me where I will be close to my parent or actually I don't have a good relationship with the parent that I'm with. This parent is abusive. So Immigration is trying to protect the right of that child so that by kind of forcing and asking over and over again, they kind of squeeze out everything they can and try to get as many people to get those children medically examined as possible. But there are certain situations and many where it's completely impossible. And when that's the case, if you don't submit it properly, if you don't explain your point of view properly, then it could take a very long time for the application to be finalized. I've seen situations where clients have come to me and they've said, Mary, it's been three years. We've given them everything. We've explained everything. We just can't do that medical examination and they don't want to take a decision. And we take over and I would say almost every time we've been successful in, in getting those applications finalized, but we had to put in a lot of work to prepare strong supporting documents. And we push our, our clients a lot in terms of explaining the whole background, the whole family situation um, so that immigration can understand, okay, th this is the situation, this parent will never agree or this child does not want. Sometimes when the child is older, they can even write a letter and say, I understand, but I'm not going to Canada. I'm very happy in Mexico. I'm very happy in Chile. I'm, I'm very happy in France. So it's a very delicate situation. It could be very confusing. It's not sometimes very clear, even though on the forms it does say, you know, you have to mention all your children, all your children must be medically examined. It's, it's, it's written in small and because it's not a logical thing, then a lot of people that don't, haven't filed hundreds and hundreds of immigration uh, application will not know this nuance and then when the time will come that immigration wants that it'll kind of be like a slap in the face and be like well how am I supposed to do this and sometimes it's as also as complicated as the child is in a small town where there is it would be so expensive or complicated to get that child to a cent a city center where they could do the medical examination because because it has to be done by a panel ph physician approved by by immigration um there's also the scenario of a child that's outside with a biological parent who's now married or in a relationship with somebody else and maybe the biological parent outside Canada with the ch child would agree but the the stepfather stepmother refuses and says what does this mean? Does this mean my child is going to go away? Uh, my my stepdaughter, step uh, uh, son, or it could be adoptive children as well. So there's so many people involved. There's so many different relationship interactions that 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 come into play. And our job as a law firm is when you come to us with that story and the complexity of the case, we kind of have to unpack everything, understand, and then make immigration understand because. Immigration will not call you or talk to you. They're, they won't call the parent outside Canada. They won't go see the child. So it's just paperwork. And how do we demonstrate all of this? And, and the, the details of the story is through the legal cover letter, through the documentation, through the reference letters. Um, so if, if you know somebody or you're in a situation where um, there's a child that has to get medically examined, but it's not possible, uh, contact us and uh, will help you. And in many situations, sometimes we've also taken on cases where clients come to us and say it's impossible to get uh, the child to be medically examined, but we sometimes provide a letter to the client to give to the biological, uh, the, par the responsible parent outside Canada and say, look, it's not that we want to bring the child behind, you know, to Canada behind your back. This is what it is. It's if sometimes the, 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 the parents are able to be on a friendly in a friendly zone then they can understand each other and they can get the child examined because at the end of the day i mean a medical examination can cost a couple of hundred dollars but there's nothing to lose from that so sometimes we also try to kind of mediate um, the situation if we can um, if you have any questions don't hesitate to contact our office